In this video we're going to have a look at the loop of Henle. This is a section of the kidney nephron. In the previous videos we've had a look at section 1, which is the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. And we've had a look at section 2, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. For this we're having a look at this one, section 3, the loop of Henle. So the loop of Henle is deemed what is called a countercurrent multiplier system. And this is a key phrase that you do need to know. So with countercurrent multiplier systems, this means two things. Firstly, the countercurrent part means that fluid within this section is going in two opposite directions. And that will come a little bit more obvious when we're going through the loop of Henle in a minute. The multiplier system part means that it's creating a very steep solute gradient in the medulla as we're going through it. Again, that will become a bit more obvious as we're going through this section. But the loop of Henle is deemed a countercurrent multiplier system. Okay, so with the loop of Henle, I've drawn it zoomed in a bit here so we can annotate on this section. It's made up of two limbs here. So there's one side over here and one side over here. This part on this side is called the descending limb. And that is going down into the medulla section of the kidney. And then over here, we've got the ascending limb, which is coming back out of the medulla section of the kidney. So in terms of the flow of fluid, a filtrate is coming out from section two, the proximal convoluted tubule, and it's moving down into this descending limb of the loop of Henle. It will move all the way around and it will come up this ascending limb, and it will move into section four, which is then the distal convoluted tubule over here. So this is then the countercurrent part of this system. This section here, the filtrate is moving downwards, and then up here on the ascending limb, it's moving in the opposite direction, it's coming back up. Before we get into what's going on with the ascending and the descending limbs, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the concentration of the filtrates as um, we're coming into this loop of Henle. So up here, where this first arrow is, the filtrate is coming from the proximal convoluted tubule. And in terms of its concentration, it's about 300 milliosmoles. It's also made up of a combination of lots of different things, but the key things that we're going to have a look at in this loop of Henle are sodium ions, chloride ions, and water. So in terms of the ascending and the descending limb, the main thing that we're going to have a look at is their permeability. So what can move across the membranes and how does it actually then move? So in terms of this descending limb over here, and its permeability. Water is able to move across the membrane. Ions, so these sodium and these chloride ions, are not able to move across the membrane. Over here with the ascending limb, in terms of the permeability, it is the exact opposite. So water is not able to cross the membrane, ions are able to cross the membrane. So the descending limb is permeable to water but not permeable to ions, and the ascending limb of the loop of Henle is permeable to ions but not permeable to water. So actually with this what we're going to talk about first is this ascending limb. Um, I find that a little bit easier because what the ascending limb does then has a direct effect on the descending limb. So with the ascending limb here, we've got ions able to move out of the filtrate part inside of the loop of Henle. They can move out into this interstitial fluid here in the medulla, which will then be taken off and put into the blood system a little bit later. Water is not able to move across this part here. So in terms of key things that are happening, the sodium ions and the chloride ions are actively pumped across the membrane into the interstitial fluid here in the medulla. So this obviously requires ATP. This means, this means that the medulla increases 
in solute concentration and the filtrate starts to decrease in concentration. And as we're coming up this ascending limb of the loop of Henle, more and more ions are being pumped out and therefore it becomes less and less concentrated as we're going up the ascending limb here. Okay, so we've got some sodium ions, we've got some chloride ions, and they are being pumped across the membrane here into the medulla. So this means this medulla section becomes more concentrated as these ions move out and the filtrate as it's coming further and further up this ascending limb it becomes less and less concentrated. So here the filtrate is very low concentration and it is about 100 milliosmol. So in terms of where it started, it is already lower than where it started. What happens down here, we'll talk about in a minute when we get to the descending limb. So 100 milliosmoles as we're coming out of the ascending limb and going into section four, the distal convoluted tubule. So then we have a look at the descending limb. So this is where we are permeable to water, but it is not permeable to ions. With this one, the main thing here is that water moves out of the loop of Henle here and it will go into the medulla it does this very very simply by osmosis It can do it by osmosis because previously we pumped out all of these ions from the ascending limb into the medulla. We've got then a very, very high solute concentration here. And remember that osmosis means water moves from a low solute concentration to a higher solute concentration through a partially or semi-permeable membrane. So water is just passively moving from this descending limb into the medulla section here. As this happens, the medulla starts to then decrease in concentration because we're filling it with more water and the filtrate will increase in concentration because we're taking water out of here but all of these ions here that we haven't yet pumped out are still in this section here. So that means that down here at the bottom of our loop of Henle this filtrate has a very high concentration. And this is normally around 1,200 milliosmoles. So remember, this is because we started with a filtrate at 300, filled with sodium, chloride, and water. There's also other different ions in there as well. To begin with, we pump out all, not all of, but quite a lot of the water so that we've still got a little bit of water, but we've also got very, very high concentrations of this sodium and chloride because that hasn't been pumped out out here because the descending limb is impermeable to these ions. So very high concentration filtrate down here. As we then move up the ascending limb, these ions are then pumped out actively through pumps into the medulla section here, which means that as it's passing up here, the filtrate becomes a lower concentration and it is around 100 milliosmoles. The other thing is obviously because we're actively pumping lots of things out and osmosis is taking water out, the volume of filtrate again is decreasing. So when we first looked at the proximal convoluted tubule, we had 180 liters coming in from the glomerular filtrate. This is again a section where quite a lot of the components in the filtrate are absorbed back into the body again. So the concentration does change, but also the volume of filtrate will also change as we go through this section here. So by the end of this ascending limb up here, we've got low concentration filtrate, about 100 milliosmoles. So in terms of what that is, that is then a hypotonic solution 
because it has a lower concentration than the fluid surrounding it in the interstitial fluid. So in the filtrate is now a lower concentration than the surrounding fluid.